So today I'm going to rebuild the rear Magura master cylinder and the reason for that is the bike failed its MOT because there was fluid leaking from the master cylinder and the rear brake light was stuck on. So I've got a new switch and new internals and we're just going to get into it. Starting off then we're going to remove the brake switch. This is a hydraulic switch, works on the cable, obviously the pressure builds in there, triggers the switch. This is the wire that goes through a meter wire on the other end. You need to trace that wire and disconnect a little white clip, which I'll show you now. So on the left hand side of the bike, above the throttle position sensor, you can see this is the cable. I've had to cut the zip tie just to be able to pull this through, but naturally, if I didn't cut that zip tie, this would have been trapped anyway. So it's just a case of disconnecting this now and then pulling it through the other side. So that's what it looks like when it's disconnected from the other side. You can see there's two wires underneath this cap and that's pretty much what holds this in. There's that switch, two little crush washers, and then that's your brake hose connection there. So we can undo this straight away because I have to change this anyway because I believe this is what a problem is with my light switch because it's stuck on. Just a case of cracking that off. Without spinning your bike off a stand. Whoa, tight mate. Don't try doing this without unclipping the white clip because you can see there it's spinning around. If you're trying to fix your bike or do this without disconnecting it, you're gonna end up snapping it because you can see it will twist. Now for your two bolts then, you can either use a T30 Torx which fits right in there or an eight mil socket spanner just to get that off there or any type of spanner really. But the reality is you don't wanna go taking these off until you pull that apart. Otherwise you're gonna try holding this and then try and break that bolt and that's gonna be a right pain. You'll end up putting them back on, but that's pretty much it with these bolts. Dead easy to remove. So obviously now I'm gonna to cut to the rebuilding of the master cylinder. So once you've removed the rubber cover off the bottom of the cylinder there, you're left with this plastic clip and the metal plunger. The aim of the game here is to get something to push the plunger in and then something to hook out the white plastic circle. And that's where these come into play then. I'll either use this long pick or the angled one to push the plunger in and then I'll use the hooked one to pull out the white plastic circle. Now I'd like to apologize for the poor camera angle choice of this part. Didn't mean to do this to be fair, but you can just see with my left hand, I push down with something in my hand then I put the hooked one in and then I pull out the circular clip. Now admittedly, this isn't the best way to pull this plunger out. You could just use a pliers, but I couldn't find any. So I pressed the plunger a couple of times in the hope it would pop out. It got close enough to the end that I could just use the little hook tool to pull it out. And then that done the job, so I was happy with that. Now apart from grease, it's pretty clean in there to be fair. So I'm gonna be cleaning that grease out ready to put the new piston and stuff in. So that's pretty much what the piston looks like. So there should be some plastic thing around there. That is what broken off. Just perished over time basically. I've got the new stuff right there. And as you can see, it's pretty much build it yourself as you go along. I mean, in comparison to that there, which is gonna make all this look like that. And with a freshly built piston, I've covered it in Magura brake paste, put it back into the master cylinder and pressed it down just to test, and then put the white clip back in. And it's pretty much as easy as a, a little plastic clip just pops straight in. And now we've got We have some pressure, so that's cool. Now obviously, refitting is pretty much exactly the same as before, but in reverse. Now with the mass cylinder back on, I can now make a start on fitting the new switch. As you can see here, I got the new switch. Part number is 8301-304-3030.
and brake light switch is spelled wrong. <laughs> so that's what it looks like outside of the packet. Then you can see I've taken this off just so it allows me to put the, the cable up like this and then I can screw it in properly. And I've also got some new copper gasket things. Now you can probably see that if this was left as a 90 degree thing, I'd be having a bit of a nightmare to get that sat in properly, but at least I can twist it now, not rack up the cables. That seems to be seated nicely. So I'm just going to give her another couple of cranks using the spanner. It's got a bit of bite on it, so I'm going to give it one more crank so those copper washers sink in. And that will do for me. I'm going to put this cover back on correctly so that we don't damage the cable. and then feed the wire back from where it came. So there it is back together. I'm gonna to leave it hanging for now and then once the brake is working correctly and I'm happy with it, I'll zip tie it back in place to make sure it doesn't hang down and get snagged on anything. And as you can see, the brake light's working so the switch is good and there's also pressure in the system because I've bled the system and I'm happy that all is good there. As you can see then, that's not really a bad job to do. As long as you've got the parts and the tools to hand, you can just rattle through it in quick succession and get the job done. Now, as for this one, it's just a case of getting it MOT'd and then the bike will be good to go. So that brings the episode to an end. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon.